Oh hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and it is Tuesday so that means it is time for Get Ready With Murder. I will be putting on this full face of makeup and telling you a true crime story. Today we will be talking about the murder of Nancy Spungen and some different theories that you might not have heard about it. So if you want to hear that tale and see how I did my makeup, please stay tuned. All right, let's get started. Today, as usual, I will probably just show you the products that I'm using and just keep on telling the story and everything, of course, will be listed in the product description below. Today, we are going to be talking about the murder of Nancy Spungen. We'll start in 1977. Nancy was 17 and she had just dropped out of college in Colorado and moved to New York um, to basically go be a punk rock groupie. Um, her life had been a little bit tumultuous up until that point. She had some mental illness issues which led to her being expelled from her high school and then having to go to a private school um later she was dis diagnosed diagnosed with schizophrenia um so that can you know be a pretty big answer to some of her problems earlier in her life but she actually when she went to her private school she ended up graduating at 16 so she was clearly a pretty smart girl and then started college right after that so by 17, she was already enrolled in an attending college, but she decided when she was 17 that she didn't want to go to college right now and wanted to go to New York and, you know, kind of live her best life. Um, punk was really coming up in the city and she was kind of the new style of groupie. There was, you know, previously the like big bands that toured had groupies that were models and beautiful and tall and gorgeous. And here comes Nancy, who's kind of short, has a different style, not like leith and long and beautiful, but just like totally herself and totally into it. And she's like, yeah, you know what? Fuck you guys. I do what I want. You want some drugs? Here you go. She was kind of known as like the girl to go to, to, you know, to get your high, if you will. Um, so while she was in this scene, she discovered a little band from England called the Sex Pistols. She and the bassist, um, Sid Vicious, were immediately drawn to each other and kind of toppled head over heels in drugs and love and were immediately inseparable. Um, she was a bit of a problem for the band because she was, you know, a very abrasive personality. And um, she was super into doing the drugs and um, so she was, a bit of a problem for the other guys in the band and to the point where she was banned from coming on tour with them at one point. <laughs> so with all of that going on it came to a point where I'll quote the band manager when he says, Sid began to dislike everything except heroin and Nancy and that led to the breakup of the Sex Pistols in 1978. So if you remember we started our story in 1977. It's been maybe a year and change that all of this has gone down. So after the demise of the Sex Pistols, Sid and Nancy decided to stay in New York and move to the Chelsea Hotel, which is a very interesting place. If you've ever like done any research into rock and roll history in New York, the Chelsea Hotel plays a huge part in it. It's tons of bands like stay there and artists and it's just kind of a place where like the bohemian lifestyle of the artist in the 60s and 70s um, stayed and you know some people there's actually a really cool documentary I think it's on Netflix I think it's just called Chelsea or the Chelsea and it talks about the people who've like you know come and gone in there but then there's the people that have been there and just live there um but it's you know technically a hotel so they're people that have lived there for like 30 years but they pay you know daily rates basically on their room and it's it's really interesting they're just you know very eclectic um, you know, artists and free people. And it's really interesting. So check that out if you haven't seen that. I think it's on Netflix. It's called either Chelsea or The Chelsea. I'm not sure. Um, so they move into The Chelsea, descend into heroin and fighting and being in love and drugs and, you know, that whole messy, destructive lifestyle. Which brings us to the night of October 11th, 1978. On this night, Sid had taken an extreme amount of a heavy opiate sedative, and I need to look at what the name is. So he took 30 tablets of something called Tuanol, which to quote is a far, low, 
far larger dose of the barbiturate than most could survive and one certain to put anyone into a state of unconsciousness for hours and he remained comatose through the morning's early hours so he took this large dose of these barbiturates which knock you out i mean and he's clearly a seasoned drug user so he's probably got some sort of a tolerance built up but still the amount that he would have taken he would have been out cold all night long so um here's where we lose some details because he's seen taking all these drugs they go back to their room and the next morning sid calls down to the front desk to ask for help for nancy because she's hurt but she's not hurt she's been stabbed to death and has bled out on their bathroom floor in their room so the timeline goes a little bit something like this it's been pulled all together so sid takes all the crazy drugs they go back to their room at 2 30 in the morning nancy calls um a man called rockets red glare who was a sometimes bodyguard for them and asks to bring them some delouded um which is a massive painkiller i don't know if you guys can hear the fan but it's driving me insane it's an opioid and it's super addictive and it's actually um a drug that is part of the opioid crisis currently in the united states it's terrible um but so that was at 2 30 in the morning at about 7 30 a.m other people in the hotel said that they heard female moans coming from sid and nancy's room and then by 10 o'clock is when Sid had woken up and called down to the front desk saying that um, Nancy needed help. So when the police arrive, they find Sid wandering the hallways of the Chelsea, completely just like out of it in an agitated state, um, clearly upset. And Nancy was dead in the bedroom or on the in the bathroom having bled from stab wounds to her stomach so having found sid wandering the hallways saying he can't remember anything being very disoriented um and nancy in the room and we all know the husband always did it he was arrested and charged for with her murder initially he did confess to the crime but later he did recant that confession stating that it was coerced and he was under distress so he was released on bail and within about three months i believe i think it was right around three months he um od'd on heroin and died himself so really a whole lot of details of what happened in that room are unknown so that is the accepted you know basic story of what happened um in the story of sid and nancy that they just did too many drugs and who knows what went on in the room maybe they're pretending maybe it was a double suicide attempt that went wrong um nobody really knows but it's you know the accepted story that um nancy spongen was killed by sid vicious now that brings us to the theories the other theories about nancy's death um kind of might have a little bit of merit to them um a lot of people who've kind of looked into this and looked into the timeline have been like you know with the amount of drugs that he was on especially those you know he would have been basically dead to the world after he took that many drugs and had passed out which is why he probably has no recollection of anything um and why he was pretty easy to coerce into a confession so the theory is there's the of course the like double suicide theory that um probably maybe maybe not that just didn't work out but i think the more um popular and maybe more accepted theory is that rockets right oh major point that i completely forgot is that the crime scene when it was investigated there was you know the area that nancy died um the area that sid was sleeping that would have been on the bed and then a bunch of their money was missing actually all of their money except some pocket change was missing from their room no other possessions just that so that brings us to the theory that rockets red glare came up at 2 30 
brought Nancy her drugs, saw that Sid was passed out on the bed, um, took money like off of him, like probably like, out of his wallet or whatever was near him. Nancy came out and caught him while he was trying to get more money from somewhere. Um, and that he then stabbed her in the stomach because she probably tried to fight him. She was like, you know, kind of a spitfire. All right, I am so sorry about that. There is a fan in this room that goes freaking crazy and it just like spazzed out for the last 20 minutes. So mm, we had to wait. Anyway, let's continue. So that's kind of the theory that has been accepted by the people that are most were most close to them. Um, most of the people in the life of Sid and Nancy are pretty adamant about the fact that Sid, no matter what, no matter how many drugs they were on, how whacked out they were, he would have never killed Nancy. So um, there's actually a few books written. One of them was by, I think, the band's manager, and then somebody else who's close to them. I can't quite remember what their relationship was, but he wrote a book on it, and he states in that book that he heard Rocket's Red Glare a few months later in CBGB um, talking about the fact that he killed Nancy and robbed them basically. So, I don't know. Could be. It just could be. Um, which is really sad to think about that somebody that you considered to trust um, as a bodyguard for you would basically see, you know, think that Sid was dead and take that opportunity to rob him and then basically just kill Nancy over some cash like it's just money people it makes me so sad when people kill other people for money it's just money so that is the short life and death of Nancy Spungen what do you guys think what do you think of the alternate theory I never heard of it up until this point um basically you know it'd been except do you say that that's so weird that only ever happens with this concealer. But basically up until this point, it had been accepted in the world that they had a crazy tumultuous relationship. They did too many drugs and Sid killed her one night, which, you know, if you think about the scene in the seventies, I'm sure the police were not too invested in trying to figure out who, you know, basically killed a punk rock groupie. If it looked like her punk rock dirt bag of a boyfriend did it, then he probably did. Case closed. We can move on to other things. Um, but I do think these other theories have a lot of merit and maybe should have been looked into a little bit more. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, have you, and on this subject, have you ever seen the movies, I think it's just called Sid and Nancy, that Gary Oldman is in? Gary Oldman. Oh my god. Can we talk about a treasure to humanity? He's just perfect. But I saw that movie and that's pretty much, and I hate to admit this, that's pretty much my basis of knowledge for this story prior to looking it up for this video. Um, so I don't know, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a good movie, you know, Gary Oldman is amazing and um, it's just interesting to see kind of a different take on the story. Um, that definitely does play with the um, narrative that he is the one who killed her. Spoiler alert, I guess, I don't know. So I would love to hear in the comments um, if you guys had heard of this story before or um, what you knew about it going into this because I learned a whole bunch of new stuff. And also I'm kind of thinking of doing um, a series within this series of like rock and roll and music industry murders. I think that'd be kind of interesting. I was inspired by watching The Dirt last night and I'd read The Dirt a few years ago and it didn't really bother me until watching the movie last night, and I don't know why, that Vince Neil basically, um, you know, drank and drove and killed his friend Razzle from Hanoi Rocks, and he only spent 12 days in jail. I think that's not awesome. But anyway, so that made me think about 
other famous, you know, deaths and murders in the rock industry. And that's when I brought this one up. So if you guys think that that'd be kind of interesting, and if you want to hear more stories like that, I'll put a little poll over here. Let me know if you'd like to see that. All right, you guys, that is the story of Nancy Spungen. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps my channel and lets you know when the next videos come out. Um, I do a new Get Ready With Murder every single Tuesday, so make sure you subscribe. All right, have a super great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.